Today is really exciting. We are going daytime shrimping. Haven't had a really good shrimping season in a couple years, so we are excited to finally be able to get back out on the water, catch some shrimp, and hopefully teach you guys a thing or two to help you be successful catching shrimp as well. So I'm gonna walk you through what we do to catch shrimp during the daytime. It is actually different than what you would probably do to catch shrimp at night. Catching shrimp in the day typically means deeper water. You see shrimp feed at night, so they'll come on to the flats, you know, shallower water to feed, and during the day, they'll go back to deeper water. Not totally sure why, but that's just what it is. That's how we catch them in the day, deeper water. Today we're going to a spot called Doctor's Inlet up in Northeast Florida. Uh, it's a good area. You know, there's several good spots along Jacksonville. We got some good reports and we want to try this area today. First uh, big tip when fishing for shrimp is tape your nets. I mean, like literally we put tape on either side of our net about an inch from the lead line and that helps it to flare out and stay open more. You say, those are really, that sounds crazy. Well, no, seriously, I actually did a video comparing two nets, one with tape, one without it. So see for yourself the difference taping your net makes. It keeps it much more open. I'll put a link for that in the description below. So check that out. Any place in particular you want to start at? About 26 right here. Might be a little bit marking. It's kind of kind of nice on the old QS. We didn't have this good definition, so. Part of it, I gotta relearn what they look like, but I think it'll help. Today, we're in a new to us, it's a used 18 foot Mako Bay boat. We previously had a 17 foot Key West boat, and uh, that boat had a old hummingbird, black and white reporter, probably circa mid 1990s. It's pretty old. Uh, the exciting thing about this boat is it's got a nice uh, new depth recorder in color. Uh, it allows us to see really well. So right now we're just kind of looking, see what we can find, kind of testing the depths, see which one's most productive. Kind of hitting that 17, 18, 19, we got them to 15, they got a little small. So we're just still kind of um, going around, trying to zone in on them. Um, 16 and a half, 17, 18, There's some stuff marking. Curious to see what it is. Yeah. Just trying to make it go. It's important to be able to see the depth, okay? That's that's a big thing in shrimping. Now you can even see shrimp as like a little fuzzy thing on the bottom and that helps too, so pay attention for that. But knowing your depth is a big deal. You see shrimping, how you catch shrimp, it's not like fish per se. Um, think about like deadliest catch, right? And they're dumping their pots systematically, figuring out where the crab are. I mean, I know there's tons more to it, but Think of that kind of gist of it. Same thing with shrimping, okay? We get out there to a spot. You're not gonna sh see shrimp, typically. You know, you, they're down on the bottom. It's kind of brown water, you just can't see them. So you just pick an area. Say, okay, a lot of boat shrimping here. If you've never done it before, it's probably this general area. And you pick a depth next, that's what we'll do. We'll say, okay, uh, let's try 20 feet of water. You know, maybe this area is between 30 and 10. Let's start with 20. It could be 30, it could be 10. You know, you just pick a spot and start, throw your net, okay? Make sure your net gets to the bottom. 
you know, make sure you have plenty of rope on your net. If you're fishing in 20 feet of water, you need a lot more than 20 feet of rope. I mean, if you say, oh, I got 25 feet of rope. Well, if there's current, you know, or the boat drive two people are throwing and you get away from your boat, well, that rope's gonna come tight and that's what closes your net up. So have plenty of rope. So you pick a depth and you throw. Okay, take a throw. Okay, you pull it up. There's the shrimp. Yes, okay, throw again. No, uh, we'll try a new spot. Maybe try 22, 25, maybe it's a ledge. Maybe you wanna be right on that ledge. Sometimes they're hard to hit, but right as soon as you go up the ledge, throw it, or maybe they're in deeper. Find, find the depth that way, it's just trying and see. There's no magic way to just like, uh, look at the conditions, look at the barometer, they're gonna be here. Pretty high. Um, looks like there's fish or something. There we go. Uh, yeah, just a few. The Mako boat is really nice in that it has a good flat platform up front. It's got wide gunnels for walking around, and it's got a couple platforms in the back to stand on. What we like to do is, um, with the two of us, sometimes one will be driving, and when we kind of get dialed in, we'll both start throwing. Usually one of us will throw. You know, We may be drifting slightly with the current. Um, my dad will throw from the front, and then he'll kind of walk down following the net that's floating with the current a little bit. And then I will run up to the front of the boat and throw mine about that time. You know, a few seconds later, his touch the bottom, he'll pull it up and he'll stand on the, the top bow platform and we'll have uh, like a bucket below. That way he can hold his net all the way up high and the bottom falls right in that bucket and you shake the shrimp out in there. Uh, today we actually forgot what's really helpful, and that is a um, kind of mesh crate. It's got like holes in it, it's a mesh thing. Uh, you'll see it on other trips. And that's nice because it's big and it's got holes in it. See the holes let the water drain out, so you just have your shrimp and you can kind of cull through them, throw back the little ones and keep the ones you want to eat. Also one thing you want to have with you besides that kind of crate is a five gallon bucket because in Florida, that's the limit, five gallons per boat. Uh, if you're on a boat, if you're on land, it's five gallons per person. Eventually you'll dump your shrimp in there and when that bucket gets full, you're done for the day. It's a lot of shrimp, so that's, that's good. You pick your depth, you know, you try it. When you find them, you kind of stay close to that area. Use your recorder, you know, you can mark that spot just so you, you don't get off of it. The current may push you back. We generally like there to be a current Seems like sometimes on slack tide, we don't do as well on the shrimp. I'm not sure why, I guess they maybe stop moving up and down the river, or whatever the case. We do like there to be some current. Make sure your net gets all the way to the bottom. You know, you wanna make sure it hits that bottom. Another tip is after it does hit the bottom, when I start pulling it up, I start slow. I'll actually even kind of like pop it a little bit and slowly pull it in, because what you want you know, when you pull a net, it pulls from the outer edges and it pulls it up like that and traps everything in it. Well, if you pull it slow, then those, you know, the outer edges will just kind of drag across the bottom and then come up. And if you kind of bump it, it makes the shrimp kick up into your net. If you were to just start pulling fast, well, rather than dragging and coming up, you're just gonna kind of pull it up like that and some stuff on the bottom may not get in your net. This way it kind of scoops everything into your net. So start off slow. Once you get it a few feet up, then you can bring on up, bring in your boat, kind of shake it, let all the net, all the shrimp fall down, and then just put them in your bucket. 
you may have to move around throughout the day. You know, if you find a spot and you're catching shrimp and it's whatever you're happy with, if you're catching 20 nice shrimp to a throw, um, then that's good, you know, stay in that area. If you're catching 10, I mean, it all comes down to how much time do you want to put in the area and how many throws do you want to do. Obviously, it takes a lot of throws to fill up a five gallon bucket if you're only catching 10 small shrimp. If you find a big spot where you're catching 100 nice shrimp, well, then you'll be done in no time. So with us, I think around 30 was what we were doing pretty good today. I was on a good throw, bad throws were, you know, 10 or so. As far as the other gear you need, besides the five gallon bucket and that mesh crate, which is helpful, you're gonna need some cast nets. Um, it's whatever you're comfortable throwing. Generally, I would say start with something small and light, maybe a six or seven footer. And when you get dialed in on a spot that's holding a lot of shrimp, move up to the bigger nets, okay? Uh, we were using some big eight footers and you can even break out a 10 if you're comfortable throwing that. You wanna make sure you get dialed in on the spot so you don't have to throw it a lot because your arms are gonna get tired. Shrimping um, is just to do well. It's all about being efficient. Take the time at the beginning to find the spot where they're at. When you find them, you know, get, get throwing. If there's multiple people in the boat, get them all out there throwing, you know, so you can all get the shrimp quicker. You don't wanna, you're not throwing the net far, you know, just throw it nice and easy, conserve that energy, and uh, just kinda get yourself into a good rhythm. All right, guys, well, we uh, did pretty good on the shrimp. Um, not killer yet, not like crazy numbers. We probably got um, two and a half gallons. Um, for people in Florida, there's a five gallon limit per boat for shrimp. So uh, not too bad, they're pretty decent size. So that's how you catch shrimp during the day. Now, here's a cool little recipe for you for cooking those shrimp. It's a good, easy recipe. I think everyone can do this. It's also good um, to make a bowl of this. It's easy to make and to have it as a snack, you know, or you could take it to work. It's one of those good meals that uh, are easy and good and tasty. All right, so we caught our fish and that was the hard part, right? Or was it? Now we have to cook them. Time out. You said fish, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> see how it's gonna be. I will shut up. <laughs> we caught our shrimp, and that was the hard part. Or was it? Now we have to cook them. And uh, there's a lot of ways to catch shrimp. From anyone who's seen Forrest Gump knows there are a lot of ways to cook shrimp. And we are just choosing one of those ways today. And that's a little recipe we call shrimp salad. It's actually my granny's recipe. I'm gonna share it with you today. Uh, I mean, it, I could get banned from a family reunion for telling you this, okay? Let's keep it hush-hush. Maybe I'll blur my face. I don't know if that'll help. Now, some people think when they think of shrimp salad, they think of lettuce and ranch dressing, tomatoes, and then sprinkled boiled shrimp on top. And yes, that is shrimp salad. Very similar to tuna salad or chicken salad. But this type of salad is actually different. It doesn't look like that at all. We don't even use lettuce. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some shrimp that we boiled and we're gonna grind it up with some other stuff and it makes a nice little um, uh, paste. Uh, it, it's binded together with the ingredients to make uh, a topping that you can put on a cracker. It's like a shrimp. You'll see. First step is boil some shrimp, okay? Doesn't take long to boil. Bring your water to a boil. It's 100 degrees Celsius. It's when the water bubbles because of the heat. That's what you want to do. So you get a pot, you get your water boiling. That's uh, high on the oven, pan, stove. Boy, are we a stickler for our definitions today. And once you do that, then you put your shrimp in. Now your shrimp doesn't take long to boil. Three or four minutes maybe. How do you know when it's done? It'll be pink, very pink. Um, think of like red lobster, right? When you put it lobster in, it's boiled, it's red. Same thing with shrimp. So we got that done, we drain the shrimp, and, and you don't have to, it doesn't have to be hot. We actually, after we boil it, we let it cool off. We actually put it in the refrigerator, it's nice and cool now. And we're gonna grind it up with our other ingredients. 
Now, before we boiled the shrimp, quick note is we peeled and deveined the shrimp before we boiled it. Some people, um, and you can do this, you can boil your shrimp with the skins on it and then peel them to eat them. Um, but we found it easier to peel them beforehand than afterwards. So we just did it that way and we boiled them with their skins off and deveined. Okay, so now what we're gonna do with our shrimp is we're gonna, we're gonna chop it up. What we got is we got this KitchenAid. It's a chopping machine. Um, it's a technical term. You can use whatever you want, food processor. <laughs> I think that's how the British say it, processor. But um, this, we call it a food processor. Um, you've got this KitchenAid, anything that chops, sort of chops a lot. Um, so what, oh, this is simple. You just put the lid on. It's a little loose. Let me get the lid on. It's a little. It's a little. There we go. Hang on one second. I got. It. There we go. Um, probably not KitchenAid's finest machine, but it'll do the job. We can't say that. <laughs> we just see. <laughs> I feel like when chefs, you know, get ready to cook, they're up there and they're at the starting line and they're like. That's what they do. They rev up their um, kitchen aids before a big cooking thing. You can uh, chop or you can pure grind it. Um, <laughs> they spelled it wrong, actually. It's puree. Um, well, they don't have a little thing above the E, so I think either way it's a misspelling. It's not a big deal. Chop or pure ground. It depends how you like your shrimp salad, so we're just gonna chop it. You could puree it, I guess, either way. Whatever makes you happy. So you're just taking a, a handful, I dumped the water out, kind of patted it down with a cloth because you don't want it real wet. Uh, we're gonna put it in there. This is the really fun part. If you got kids, they probably like it. Um, other than make sure they don't chop their fingers off. That's enough. Put one more in. <clears throat> Locked in. Cut her up. Still, uh, plugged there. in. Cut. There we go. Anyways, so I'm gonna take some shrimp, put it in here, about this much. We're just gonna lightly chop her up. A few more, call that a pulse. If you're uh, in the medical field, you'll relate. Okay, so we just take this and we're gonna dump it in our bowl. Just like that. Okay guys, you wanna use a dill pickle. It's not a brand name, it's a type. You think that's obvious, but not all guys would know that, right? Uh, a lot of guys watch my channel, trying to make it a guy-friendly cooking show. Dial it down a notch. So, um, we got our dill pickle. Uh, you can get the pre-sliced, the hamburger dill, or you can get a whole dill pickle. Either way, you're going to slice it and dice it. Um, so, you know, it's whatever you got. Uh, always remember to open the lid first before you film it so you don't struggle with it on camera. We did about two pounds of shrimp and a handful of pickles. You see, this is a um, one pint jar. I'm going to use... What, maybe a half? Yeah. About a half of these pickles. And it's kind of relative, you know, you might find you like a lot of pickles in your shrimp salad. If you're allergic to pickles, I don't recommend using this recipe. There we go. Yeah, that's not, maybe a little, maybe 40% of a jar. Lock it back in. Locked in, chop. And 
gonna use one of these squirtles. Or some people call them spurtles, namely the manufacturer. All the Pokemon fans probably call them squirtles. <clears throat> there we go. More. So this recipe, we're at about two pounds of shrimp. About 40% of a one pint jar of dill pickles. And we're gonna do a half a cup of mayonnaise to start out with. I might add some more if we need to uh, get the uh, consistency a little different. We'll, we'll know that once we put this in. I'm gonna slap this in the jar. Okay, now's the fun part. Stir this all together. Add a little bit more mayo, so that means we're gonna do three quarters cup of mayonnaise. Final thing, might add just a touch of salt. That's it. You can use any cracker to eat them on. Um, normally we'd say uh, let it chill before you eat it. Um, but we like saltines the best. So all you do is you put it on your cracker like that. And boom, there you go. Got yourself a quick, easy recipe. You can take this to work with you, you know, Good thing to eat on throughout the rest of the week. Holds really well, nice and cool. It's good in the Florida where it's hot. It's nice to have a good, cool snack. If you guys got any questions about uh, what you can do to catch shrimp better or how we do it or gear you need, comment below and we'll try to help you out as best as we can. Thanks for watching this video. We got a bunch more videos. So if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and check us out on other social media sites like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys next time.